25 years after our world was ripped apart from the inside, we had peace. But then, those we loved were taken. Mom! And everything changed. It's been five years since a fully-fledged numbered entry to the Gears of War series has chainsawed its way under consoles. The series is memorable for its ludicrous machismo, stereotyping and cheesy writing. So it might come as a surprise to hear that Gears of War 4 is neither of those last two points, instead going above and beyond the bar the series has already set before it. As of a few years ago, Gears of War has been handballed to a new studio created by Microsoft dedicated to the series called The Coalition. They've taken the best parts of Gears, like slick cover-based gameplay, amazing visuals, over-the-top action and a strong competitive online experience, and given it new life with a story that isn't completely nonsensical or filled with caricatures. Gears of War 4 is set 25 years after the events of Gears 3, this time featuring Marcus Phoenix's son JD and his two friends Kate and Dell. The Locusts have been long defeated and JD and Dell are AWOL COG soldiers. This doesn't sit so well with the coalition of governments and the trio become outlaws known for salvaging and stealing COG technology. Fast forward a few circumstantial events and the story opens up into a tale of rescue and revenge against a horrific new enemy our heroes dubbed the Swarm. In order to accomplish this mission, JD leads the group to his now older and further begrudged dad, Marcus Phoenix, for support. Fire at will! Main house, go! Gears 4's pacing moves quite organically and believably after the first of five acts, which can be considered quite slow and the least interesting. It's here that we're introduced to the secondary enemy threat of the game called the DBs. They're an army of varied robot types from the smaller, ball-like trackers to the heavier foot soldier DR1s and flying drones called Guardians. With them comes a range of new weapons, with some operating similarly to the original rifles and automatic guns, to new energy rifles and rocket launchers. The real threat of the game though are the Swarm, who introduce all new enemy types that completely disrupt the way people have been playing Gears. For example, there's the Pouncer who leaps atop various points of cover, firing spikes from its tail and becoming quite deadly within close combat. Then there are the Snatchers, who are twice the size but can knock the player down and swallow them into itself, prompting teammates to focus their attention on retrieving their squad mate. While this makes for a great change of pace in the game's campaign, these new enemies really have an impact in the new Horde 3.0. Since Gears 2's release in 2008, the series has been prominently featuring its wave-based online co-op mode. In this next iteration, Horde has been beefed up to include three big changes. Character classes, gear cards, and a movable defense spawner called the Fabricator. The new classes, Soldier, Engineer, Scout, Sniper, and Heavy, work the way you'd assume, requiring each class to fulfill their named roles. Gear cards, on the other hand, give players the opportunity to complete personal challenges, earning bonuses during waves, and can be bought as microtransactions. And the Fabricator can be moved into any defensible position on the map in order for players to hole up and hold their ground. The Fabricator only works when players have enough credits to purchase certain defenses. For example, a spiked fence will only cost a couple thousand credits, but a Troika turret will cost 10,000. The credits are earned by killing enemies and collecting credit drops before the beginning of the next wave and delivering them back to the Fabricator. This entry to the Gears series is the most vibrant and visually striking experience yet. The seemingly in-engine cutscenes look amazing, and the overall visual design in-game pushes forward the graphical power of the Xbox One. It might not be quite the same level as Uncharted 4, but it's pretty damn close. Okay, this might be a problem. While the game does do its best to improve upon the series' familiar formula, some of its more obvious tropes do remain. A room full of chest-high walls will always tell you that a firefighter is about to break out, you use grenades to blow up enemy spawn points. However, the things that makes Gears great are also here. Meat shields, curb stomping, chainsaw executions, active reloads. There's even a great titanic battle in the game's final act. In fact, Gears 4's final act is probably its best, with the game striking two great emotional moments. That said, the campaign's biggest problem is its ending. The game does so well to set up its characters, sense of place and story, yet it cuts itself short of any resolve and leaves on an infuriating cliffhanger. Gears 4 is an amazing game that takes the best parts of its previously established formula and improves upon them in almost every way. Despite the disappointing ending, Gears 4 is an incredible effort that triumphantly slots itself into Microsoft's 2016 trifecta of Xbox One exclusives. Quantum Break, Forza Horizon 3, and Gears of War 4. 
The Coalition has taken an established franchise from a huge developer in the shooter genre and made it their own for the better. Gears of War 4 is the game all shooter fans need to get their hands on.